Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to all you YouTube channel subscribers. Wanted to give you an update here uh, on Hurricane Idalia because it is up to 100 mile an hour now sustained winds, maximum sustained winds. And by the way, when you hear that term, that means that somewhere in the circulation uh, there are 100 mile an hour sustained winds. It doesn't mean that the entire area near the center has 100 mile an hour winds. And this is why a lot of times when a storm makes landfall, that official observations never seem to match the maximum sustained winds because usually they occur over a fairly small area and the chance of that area coming directly over an observation station is usually pretty small. And so I don't want you to think that this is a huge swath of 100 mile an hour winds, okay? It doesn't work that way. Uh, it's a very small area, but you know what? If you're in that small area, it's, it's a big deal. So here is the infrared view. You're looking at the uh, cloud top temperatures here, okay? Uh, the satellites measure the amount of radiation that's being emitted by the tops of the clouds, and from that, it can figure out what the temperature of the cloud is. Well, if it sees a cloud temperature of minus 80 degrees C, then it's saying, hmm, only way it could be that cold is if it's really high up, okay? Then in the eye, we're just now beginning to maybe see the formation of that. Uh, let me see if I can get my cursor up here, right in here. Um, once the eye becomes very, very well defined and it's basically clear, then the satellite is looking all the way down to the ocean surface and sensing that temperature. Well, that temperature is in the 80s, above zero, okay? So that's why the eye shows up so incredibly well in infrared imagery because you're taking a look at the difference in temperature between the tops of clouds that go way up there and the ocean water temperature that is very, very warm. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look. I got to click up here, I think, to be able to get this to advance. There we go. Uh, these are the latest numbers as of the five o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. 26.1 north, 84.8 west, 300 miles south of Tallahassee, max sustained winds at 100, moving to the north at 16, and a minimum pressure now down to 972 millibars, or if you prefer, 28.71 inches of mercury. And here is the forecast track from the Hurricane Center. A major hurricane making landfall. Winds could be up to 115, 120 uh, by the time it makes landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida tomorrow morning. And then it weakens to a tropical storm around Charleston in the wee hours of Thursday morning, moves offshore Thursday afternoon as a tropical storm. And then interestingly enough, some of the models are actually basically tracking this thing around an upper level high and it comes back across Florida into the Gulf of Mexico. But there's so much vertical wind shear that the chance of reintensification appears to be very minute. And so it looks like the main impact with this is going to be over the next couple of days in terms of affecting a landmass. And then after that, it doesn't look like it's going to be any big deal. Okay, so let's take a look at the watches and the warnings. A tropical storm warning in effect for the North Carolina coast from the South Carolina border all the way up to Surf City, uh, right on the border of Onslow and Pender County. And then north of that, it's a tropical storm watch. And I don't think there's any doubt that the impacts along our coast are going to be much greater in the southern coastal areas than they will be farther north. Uh, if you're up around Nags Head or someplace like that, uh, it really uh, shouldn't be all that terribly bad. And there'll be some impact, but I don't think it'll be anything devastating. And then in terms of expected rainfall, and I'll sort of have to give you a legend here manually, okay? The lightest shade of green is anywhere from 0.01 to 0.25, okay? And then, whoops, i to go backwards here. The second shade of green is 0.25 to 0.50. The third is 0.50 to 0.75. And the fourth, the darkest shade of green is 0.75 to an inch. And then it goes an inch intervals after that. So this is the one inch plus area, two inch plus, three inch plus, four inch plus, five inch plus down in here. And then you get down into South Carolina, it's even heavier. And that's quite a gradient. You notice how these colors are really tightly packed in here? So if you're up around Roxborough, up here in Person County, you may only get a quarter to a half an inch out of this whole thing. The triangle area, maybe one to three inches, and then down in here, four to six. So there's gonna be quite a difference from northwest to southeast across the area. And uh, the good news about this is that the system is moving so quickly that the chance of this turning into a catastrophic rainfall event 
is almost zero. Okay, this is not going to be like Florence, where the thing just sat there for a couple of days and dumped on everybody, and you end up with 40 to 50 inches of rain in some uh, locations. That ain't going to happen, okay? But there could still be some flooding issues uh, with this, with, you know, four to six inches of rain uh, in a short period of time, obviously can cause some trouble. So we will uh, keep an eye on that uh, for you. So that's the latest on Idalia. Now, over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours, I am here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and the effects here should be very similar to what they're going to be along the southern North Carolina coast. And so uh, I will try to do some live updates or at least some near live updates for you to let you know visually what's going on down here and how things look. And then once we get to, you know, into Thursday night, Friday, and the Labor Day weekend, it looks just incredibly nice with zero chance of any rain. So uh, we're going to end up the summer with a bang in terms of the weather. Okay, folks, that is the latest on Idalia. Again, more updates coming. Stay tuned. You all have a great Tuesday evening, and we'll talk soon.